In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a WordPress website on Hetzner Cloud, complete with a domain name and an SSL certificate that automatically renews. So if that's something you're interested in, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial. Okay, I'm here at Hetzner.com and what I'm going to do is log into my cloud account. And in here, you'll see the dashboard of which you can have multiple projects. Um, first time in here, you can simply make your new project, give it a name. My project name is Tony Teaches Tech. So I'll click into here and we will add a server. So there are, as of now, there are four different locations that we can have a server, um, two in Germany, one in Finland, and one new one in the United States. So I'm located in the United States. So I'm gonna pick this location here in Ashburn, Virginia. Now, they do have an option, they have a bunch of apps that you can pre-install on your server, one of which is WordPress, uh, but this one is running on top of an Apache web server. Um, I wanna use a, an Nginx web server. So I, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the OS image section and install Ubuntu operating system. And then through this tutorial, we'll go through the process of installing the web server, which is Nginx, and then PHP, the database, which is gonna be Maria database and uh, WordPress. And that'll be what we call a LEMP stack, Linux, Nginx, uh, MySQL, or Maria database and PHP. Um, so if that's all new to you, don't worry, we're gonna go through every step of the process. Okay, so as far as the type of server, um, you can pick a standard or a dedicated server. We don't need dedicated in this case, we're gonna stick with the standard, which will give us, uh, and I'm gonna go with the recommended option here, three CPU cores, three virtual CPUs, four gigabytes of RAM and 80 gigabytes of solid state drive storage plus 20 terabytes of monthly traffic. And that equates to $6.96 uh, six euros and six euros 90 per month. Let's just say that. Um, okay. So you can add additional storage space if you want to. There's some other uh, optional options that you can configure down here, including a firewall, but we're gonna skip through that. Um, I will use my SSH key, uh, which is gonna allow me to log in via SSH without a password, which is a good thing. And then for the name of this, I'm gonna call it Netwits, which is gonna be the name of my website that I'm creating. So. Let's go ahead and create this instance. And one of the coolest things, we'll, we'll keep this going live here, uh, is how quickly these Hetzner Cloud instances spin up. Like that was, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds at most. And this is now accessible at this IP address. So if you're on a Mac computer or a Linux computer, you can use a terminal application to log in via SSH. Or if you're on Windows, uh, an older version of Windows, or even a newer version of Windows, you can use PuTTY or uh, the command line, uh, command prompt application to access your server via SSH. So let me show you how to do that on um, Mac here in terminal. So I'm opening up a terminal session, and what I'm going to do is type in SSH root at this IP address right here. So let me minimize this. I will copy that. Whoops, oh, we clicked into it. Um, and this is actually a good thing to show you. Uh, all the information, our IP addresses, the amount of uh, the cost that this has cost us so far. So just uh, 0.01 euro, the amount of terabytes of traffic that we used and just the specs of our server. Um, they also have these uh, really attractive graphs as far as like the CPU, how much the disk is working, network traffic, all that good stuff. So there's some really nice features in here. Uh, if you need to scale up your server, if, if, if for some reason that uh, eight gigabytes of RAM is not enough, or I mean, four gigabytes of RAM is not enough, that's what we're using. We need to double that to eight. We can simply do that here with the click of a button. And if we're done with this at any point in the future, we can delete it. So um, we won't go through every option here, but it is good to know this these uh, this dashboard exists. So anyway, let's copy the IP address and log into our server like this, SSH root at your IP address, hit enter. And this is our first time connecting. Do we trust the connection? You can type yes, hit enter. And now we will be logged into the server. So um, this, any commands that we execute from this point forward, as long as it says root at the name that you chose, 
that means they will be executing on the server in the data center that you choose. For me, it's Ashburn, Virginia. Before we get to the install, and actually, well, yeah, before we get to the install, let's update our system. So we'll do an apt update. And that'll just take a few seconds to make sure we have, we're looking at the latest packages. And then after that, we'll do an apt upgrade. But I also wanna make sure that we uh, have a domain name pointing to our, our IP address. So we're gonna take care of that. So let's do an apt update, or an apt upgrade, I should say. And that will take a little bit of time to download the extra packages and install them. And while that's running, let's minimize this. Let's take care of the domain name. So I'm going to assume that you have a domain name. It doesn't matter where you bought your domain name from, um, but the steps will be essentially similar. I got my domain name from Google Domains. As you can see here, this is the domain name netwits.io. So wherever you bought your domain name from, go ahead and find the DNS settings associated with that. And what we're going to do is add two a records, okay, and these A records are going to point to the IP address of our server with Hetzner. So I'm going to paste in my uh, IP address here and create another record, and this one's going to be for www.netwits.io, as you can see right there, and that one's also going to be an A record, and that one is also going to point to the IP address of our Hetzner cloud server. So we will save those changes. And the reason we wanna do this as soon as possible is because sometimes it takes time for the DNS servers to propagate your changes. Uh, as, you, as it says here, um, changes are published immediately but may take time to propagate. So we'll let that run in the background. We'll check it out later. And actually, we'll check it out now. We'll, we'll go to DNS checker, checker.org and we can look up the A record for netwits.io of type A, and we'll search that. And it was actually a pretty instantaneous update. So all of these uh, DNS servers around the world are actually already pointing to our IP address. So that's a good thing. Okay, and just a few moments later, those packages have been installed. So now let's go ahead and install WordPress. And if you're not familiar, if uh, most of the time for Ubuntu operating systems, the public facing website files are located at var www html. And in here, uh, you'll find this default index.html uh, file. So if we look at that file, the contents of that file, You'll see that it says something like, welcome to Nginx. If you this page, the Nginx web server is successfully installed, blah, blah, blah. But what's really cool, we can go to our web browser and go to our domain name because our DNS record has been updated. And we can see that page here in real time. So just to prove to you that we are looking at the same thing, um, let's edit this file. Okay, so this file right here, and I'm gonna use the uh, a text editor called Vim. And if you're not familiar, I'll try to help you along. It's a little odd to use for some people, but um, I prefer it. So you can type vim index, the name of the file index, and in, in, on uh, Ubuntu you can use tab to complete the name of it. Um, so hit enter to open that file, and this is the HTML code that's associated with it. So here is the header that says welcome to Nginx, and I'm going to use my arrow keys to come over here in to make a change to this file, I can type I to enter insert mode and then backspace to get rid of this. And then I will type Tony teaches tech. And to save the change, I can hit escape, shift colon WQ to save the file, hit enter. And now if I minimize this and go back to the web, uh, the domain name, the web page, refresh it, you'll see now that it says Tony teaches tech. Okay, so that is the default landing page, like I said. What we're actually gonna do is move up a level. So we're gonna go up a level to the var www directory, and we're gonna download WordPress and install it into a directory called WordPress. So in order to do that, we can use the wget command to get the official WordPress package from wordpress.org. So wget https colon slash slash wordpress.org slash latest dot tar dot gz and that's going to go ahead and download that into this directory so we will expand this into that wordpress uh, directory with tar 
dash x z v f and then the name of the file so now if we do an ls we can see that we have not only an html directory but a wordpress directory so we don't need that latest.tar file anymore so let's get rid of that with the rm command and we'll do an ls-la to look at some of the attributes for these uh, folders and you'll see that the group is no group and the user is nobody let's change that let's change the ownership with the chown command to not only this directory but all files under it we want the web server to own that and the the user for the web server is www-data and the group is also www-data and uh, we're going to apply that like i said to the wordpress directory and this dash r flag will be recursively everything under it so we'll execute that and now if we do an ls-la we'll see that that is the new uh, owner user in the group that owns that so, uh, similarly for permissions which is this these things over here um, wordpress recommends that you do uh, for directories of type d directories you have a permission of 755 and for files so not directories type f you have a permission of 644 so we'll ex we'll we will apply that to the WordPress directory in everything underneath it. So we'll go into the WordPress directory just to give you a quick glimpse of what's in here. And we have our index.php file. We have the WP content directory, which includes a lot of things like plugins and themes. And we also have um, a WordPress config sample file, which we will be looking at a little bit later when we actually get to the point where we configure uh, WordPress when we actually uh, personalize it for ourselves. So that is, uh, I think that's it for this stage. Let's go ahead and work on the database next. So we have to pretty much create a database for WordPress to use. It's going to be an empty database, but like I said, later on in the tutorial, we'll, we will tell WordPress where that database is so it can uh, read and write to it as necessary. Um, but first, before we do that, let's secure our MySQL installation. And there is a command that ju does just that. It makes it pretty easy. So we can type MySQL underscore secure installation, hit enter. And this is asking for the current root password, of not, not of the root user, but the root user for the MySQL database. We don't have one, so we're going to hit enter. And then now it'll say, what is your new password? And you can confirm it. Do you want to remove anonymous users? Yes. Do you want to disallow root login remotely? Yes. And do you want to remove the test databases and access to it? Yes. And reload privilege tables now? Yes. OK, so that takes care of the secure installation. Now we can access the MySQL database with MySQL-U root. Dash P, and that'll prompt us for that password that you just created. So go ahead and type that in, hit enter, and now this is our MySQL command prompt. So we're going to create our database and a user that goes along with that database. So um, basically, that's going to look something like this Create database. The name of my database is going to be called Example Database. I recommend that you choose something more appropriate for whatever website you're setting up. And then these are the recommended options that uh, WordPress suggests that you use. So we will create that database and then we will create a user associated with that database like this. So the user's name is going to be example user. Again, pick something appropriate for you. And his password is example underscore password. Please pick a stronger password than that. OK, and then as far as privileges are concerned, we will uh, grant this user all privileges in this database and all tables in that database. And finally, we will apply those changes with flush privileges and get one out of the MySQL command prompt with exit. OK, so that is taken care of. Next, let's move on to the web server. So the web server is located in the etc nginx directory or part of the configuration of the web server is here and you'll see that we have a sites available directory and a sites enabled directory so what we're going to do is create a configuration file for wordpress in the sites available directory and then when we later on 
make a symbolic link into the site's enable directory. Uh, that'll officially publish those changes as far as the web server is concerned and make those changes uh, publicly accessible. So let's do that. Let's go into the site's available directory. And in here, we just have our default configuration file. Let's make a new one called wordpress.conf. And I will use my uh, cheat sheet over here to paste in some basic configuration. And what this, uh, I'll go through this step by step. So line by line, I mean. So we're listening on port 80. That is the HTTP port. My server name is the domain name, netwits.io, and the www version of that. The root of our WordPress, we were just in there, is var www WordPress. And the index file, I should do that too. Inside of there is a file called index.php. Now I have two location blocks, uh, this one right here and this one right here. This one it, uh, takes care of serving PHP files. And this one takes care of non-PHP files. So you'll see this is called this fast CGI pass. Uh, is called PHP handler, the value of it, and that corresponds to this upstream block up here, which um, is pointing to the socket, this PHP socket version 7.4. And what we want to do is make sure that this socket actually exists on our file system, because you might have a different version of PHP than me. So just make sure that uh, you check that this exists, and we'll do that actually right now. So we'll get out of here and do ls and then the path to that socket file and in my case this does exist but if that doesn't exist just back out to the var run php level and you might have a socket for php 7.3 or 8.0 or something else but in this case we are good to go okay so i mentioned the symbolic link from sites available to sites enabled let's go ahead and do that so we can do that with the ln s command and we're going to symbolic link from the etc nginx sites available directory um, and specifically the wordpress comp file and the that's going to end up in the nginx sites enabled directory so now that that is from the perspective of the web server published, uh, we will check to make sure that the configuration file uh, doesn't have any syntax errors or anything like that. We can do that with the nginx-t and it says the syntax is okay, the test is successful. So let's apply those changes with system ctl restart nginx and that's gonna restart the nginx web server. Okay, so let's go back to our browser and we can proceed with the installation of WordPress. So we'll minimize out of this and refresh the page. We saw the default landing page for Nginx before. Now we should see the installation file or the installation configuration for WordPress. So English, that's a good language for us. Let's click continue. And now we will connect the database that we created earlier with WordPress. So click on the let's go button and if I remember correctly, my database name was example database. My username was example user and my password was example password. Database host local host is good and you can pick a table free fix or keep the default of WP underscore. So let's submit that. And it says, all right, Sparky, you've made it through this part of the installation. Uh, now let's go ahead and continue the installation. So let's run the installation. And this is the part where we can configure our website. So my website is gonna be called Netwits. And the username, the admin username uh, for this website, as far as WordPress is concerned, is going to be, I'll just do Tony Teaches Tech. And I will use the password that they suggest here. And I'll just make sure I note that over here and I'm gonna give them my email address. Uh, this is the administrator's email address. Okay, so let's go ahead and install WordPress and that'll just take a second, very good. And now we can log into our WordPress admin dashboard. So the same credentials that we just created. So for me, Tony Teaches Tech is my username and then I'll paste in that password. We will log in and I'll save that. Um, and this is your WordPress admin dashboard. Congratulations, we have a WordPress website. We can look at the WordPress website 
and this is what it looks like it's running the 2021 theme and if you i'm not going to go through all of this uh, but if you want to change your theme you can come in here and pick a different theme add a new theme here there's a lot to choose from there's also uh, plugins to add functionality to your website you can write blog posts in this section you can create new pages here and I have a whole separate video about that, but what I want to do, it's always good practice after you're done installing a fresh copy of WordPress, is to come into the tools section and go to site health. And what we want to check to see if there's any issues. And there are, there is one critical issue. Uh, WordPress is saying that there's these optional modules that are missing. So let's go ahead and install those. Kind of like we did in the beginning with the, the package manager, um, there are some PHP modules that we have to install, and that looks something like this. So apt install PHP curl, DOM, MB string, image magic, zip, and GD, and that corresponds to pretty much this list right here. So let's go ahead and install those, and that's just going to take pretty quick 73 megabytes of additional space on our system. Okay, that has finished. Next, let's take care of adding an SSL certificate to our website to enable uh, HTTPS, okay? So um, if you notice right now, if we go to netwits.io, it says it's not secure. Um, if we try to go to HTTPS colon slash slash netwits.io, that doesn't work. We don't have an SSL certificate. So let's give ourselves a free SSL certificate. And we're going to install another package manager, which is going to give us the capability of um, having the SSL certificate auto renew. So that package manager is called snap. So we'll install that with apt install snap D. And yes, we want to continue. So let's go ahead and let that run. Okay, now that we have that, let's do a snap install core and a snap refresh core and we will let that run as well okay and now in order to actually get the SSL certificate issued to our website we're going to install certbot that's going to allow us to get a free SSL certificate from a certificate authority called let's encrypt so in order to do that let's do snap install dash dash classic certbot hit enter and one last thing before we issue our SSL certificate, let's make a symbolic link from the snap bin certbot directory to the user bin certbot. Okay, so let's get our SSL certificate. We can do that with certbot dash dash nginx, hit enter. And what this is gonna do is go, it's gonna go into our WordPress configuration file at etc nginx sites available WordPress and read that configuration file find the domain names and get an SSL certificate based on that. So let's go through that process. I will type in my email address and this is saying, do you agree to the terms and service? Yes, hit enter. Do you want to receive additional emails? I'm gonna say no. And now, like I said, this has read our configuration file for Nginx. Um, we want a SSL for both of these. So as it says here, leave input blank to select all options. So we'll just hit enter. And now it's requesting a certificate for both of those domain names. All right, perfect. It says they have successfully deployed a certificate uh, based on this configuration file. And the certificate is physically on our system at this location. And the key associated with that is at this location. So we can actually go, uh, we're already here. We can look at our WordPress configuration file and see the changes that CertBot made. And if you remember, uh, pretty much this is all we had before. Uh, but what Serpot did, they came in here and they added this listen block uh, on port 443, which is the HTTPS port. And here, here's that path to the, the certificate and the key as well. And then the server block down here pretty much redirects. It does a 301 redirect. If somebody tries to go to www netwits.io they're going to take them to just uh, without the www but the secure version of the website and up here any other unsecure request it's going to redirect to https so that is looking good and we can test out that functionality by just simply refreshing this page so if we're going explicitly to http netwits.io if we refresh the page it should redirect us to the secure version of the website 
as you can tell, this connection is secure, certificate is valid, and if we look under the details of the certificate, that originated from Let's Encrypt. And one last thing, there is our HTTPS. It's always good to practice as well to come back into your WordPress admin dashboard, uh, log back in, it'll kick you out because it, it's now a different uh, website with HTTPS, and go into your settings general. And we wanna make sure we put, uh, for our URLs, WordPress address and site address, make sure it has HTTPS for those two um, URLs. So we'll save those changes. I think it'll kick us out again, log back in, and we're good to go as far as that's concerned. Now, I, I promise you that this SSL certificate will um, automatically re renew. It, it lasts for three months, but there's a process that's gonna check twice a day to see if there's a certificate renewal available. And if it is, it'll automatically go ahead and, and, and install that for you, get the new issue, issue the new certificate and install it for you. Um, so I just wanna verify that that is the case. And we can do that with system CTL list dash timers. And one of these timers, actually, let me make this a bit bigger. Yep, one of these timers is going to be the snap certbot renew timer. And when that executes, like I said, twice a day, uh, it's gonna execute the snap certbot renew service, which will install a new SSL certificate if yours is expiring soon. If you wanna learn more about customizing your WordPress installation, plugins, all that stuff. I have this video called 15 important things to do after installing WordPress. So check that out next and I will see you over there.